Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. And it is an honor and privilege to have Mr. Spike Slauson from Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. He's also with the Swinging Utters, Filthy Thieving Bastards, Revolts, and Ook Hunt. So he's all over the place with stuff, man. And uh, we're going to be talking about Me First and the Gimme Gimme's greatest hits album that's out right now, Rake It In. And I believe this is going to be their seventh studio album, maybe. Is that right, Spike, or no? It could be. that that That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> it's, it's hard to keep track after a while. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love Me First and the Gimme Gimme's. I like how you guys cover songs and... And and just the thank you, just the twist that you guys put on it. I've, I've loved it ever since I was in high school, man. So thank you as a fan. Well, thank you as a uh, as a cover band, <laughs> <laughs> and nothing wrong with that at all. As a musical plagiarist, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. So, what's impressed you the most about this greatest hits album? I know you guys have you know seven seven albums out, but is it hard to pick? tracks for this greatest it's album or no yeah it was i mean that's why i left it up to the uh to the experts you know right. mike was the you know what i mean well mike and the people at fat they they kind of knew which of the songs which of the recorded versions were more popular so we just kind of left it to them and and have to live with with the result and but we're pretty happy with it you know the title the cynical title notwithstanding this is something that I wanted to ask you guys for a long time. You guys are in multiple bands, all of you guys, different bands. Yes. Why go the cover route uh, band? Did it just make more sense to you guys and say, okay, let's just do another band and let's just be a cover band? How'd that play out? Well, no, well, they came to me actually with the idea because I was working in the mailroom at the at the label right, right. at the time. And, um, and Mike and Joey approached me with the idea – Basically, uh, the premise was that the best song on any given 90s punk record were the covers. So why not start a band that just did that, you know, mm -hmm. that did only that? You take a lot of the sort of decision making out of the equation and you can just do it. You could almost play live, you know, tomorrow. Like from the time they came to me with the idea to the night of our first show was, was like a really surprisingly short amount of time. So you take the guesswork out of it. Like the guesswork is in, you know, when you're doing your own stuff, like how you want to present it, right. you know, like there's a lot of self-examination and, and, uh, and doubt where with covers it's, it's already, somebody already did the, the legwork for you. You know what, man, you're right. I, I think punk bands do cover songs a hell of a lot better. And I don't know why it just, it, it sounds better. Gob, for instance, I think they did a cover of White Wedding by Billy. Uh -huh. I, I think or it might have been Ann Kendall's. God, what an awesome cover! And uh, yeah, you guys shocked me when you guys did Jolene by Dolly Parton. I was like, what? I was like, that's pretty. Well, absurd. yeah, I mean, San Francisco. I mean, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Dolly Parton is is like a, she's a hero out here. You know what I mean? I, I think most of the old old like classic country uh, performers and songwriters are are. Definitely in San Francisco. I don't know if it's because we're like, it's the West, you know, right. or if it's, but uh, yeah, D Dolly definitely holds a special place in everybody's hearts out here. You know, I know you guys are a cover band, but how much growth musically have you seen me first and again, McGee's go from album to album to album covering these songs, man? I think we kind of got tighter live, you know, we, we turned into like, like an actual and again, this is like something about covers is that like when you take the sort of all the decision making or like the indecision more precisely, when you take that out of the picture and can just kind of go about playing the music and, you know, kind of trying to like set a fire on stage, then, then you can do all those all those things that you're sort of there to do rather than like and I think it's almost, you know. It's almost kind of egotistical, all that indecision and all that, you know, it, it's just a little bit too self-obsessed when you should be just as worried about how you present the music in mm -hmm. as like, you know, just little details in the composition or whatnot. I, I, I think it's, it's like going out and giving everything that you have requires a certain level of, of, yeah, you, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be decided. It's, it's gotta be a, a, a confident decision that you make. And when you come out and play these songs live, it's just kind of a foregone conclusion. They're kind of committed to muscle memory. 
Right. So you just kind of go out and do it. Like, whereas at first, you know, we didn't know what we were doing, who we were. Now that's, that's, we, you know, we kind of know what's up. We think. (laughs) (laughs) We all doing a hell of a job at it. So y'all doing something right. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Is it difficult for you guys to figure out which songs you want to, want to cover? Or do you guys stay in one certain era of music or how do you guys decide on this? Well, that's another thing that's evolved over time is that like, like I myself have learned not to do songs that I actually like, you know what I mean? Okay. Like it, because yeah. the, by the time it comes out the other end, it kind of, you know, it, it doesn't feel like we've necessarily added anything to it. If that makes sense. Like, it, like if it, if it's different and better or like more suited to our tastes or our peers or our fans taste, then that's great. But if it's, if, if the original is still the better performance then then you know i don't see the point point. and usually with songs that i like they tend to be like rock songs or outsider pop songs and and they were perfect in the first place and uh so i've learned to 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 sort of take other people's consultation like mike and joey are generally good they have great ideas for for what songs we should cover mike has got a really good ear for hooky kind of pop music what helps you keep your mind open to, to writing new lyrics, bass stuff, guitar. Because, I mean, you're all over, well-rounded musician, man. Even, hell, you can play a ukulele. What what do you do yeah. to keep your mind open to all this stuff, man? You mean besides, like, combustibles? You know what I mean? Because that definitely right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> plays, uh, uh, plays a role in open-mindedness. No, I don't know. I, uh, you know, I, got, I, try, to, I try to surround myself with, with uh, bullshit detectors. <laughs> you know, yeah. My wife is a really is an expert bullshit detector. Um, <laughs> you know, usually people that say things that you don't like, you know, th- those are the people worth keeping around. And um, mm-hmm. you know, they can point you in the right direction and point you away from the wrong direction. In your own opinion, what do you hope the fans take away from the new album Raking In, the greatest hits, when they start to listen to this, man? Just a good time and not to take themselves or whatever you know, youth movement or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not to take their hairstyles or their clothes or whatever, not to take any of it seriously, just to have a good time and, and, you know, and to be themselves. I I don't know. (laughs) No, that's about it. You know, just, 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 it's, it's, it's all about unselfconscious fun, which is, you know, depending on where you're at, it's in short supply. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, that, that when they see you having it, you know, they resent it. You know, I, I'm in Kentucky, and and I absolutely love punk music. Do you think that we'll ever have another big surge of it again? Or I know music comes, seems like it just once one's done, it it, it just comes back again like a like a flow of music. It'll eventually come back. Do you think? Yeah. We'll, see this well again? I mean, it, like I think, yeah, and it's definitely like, like I said with like taking any one specific thing seriously, like. It, it definitely like it ebbs and flows and that's according to like generations and time periods and political situations, which there's a pretty loaded political situation at the moment. Oh yeah. And I think it's also regional, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, but I don't know if it, if, if it would be exactly punk or even if it should be exactly, that's kind of what I mean. Like you shouldn't take it so seriously. You shouldn't take like the words or the movement of like a bunch of English dudes where like they were kind of reacting to their political situation at the time. And it was like, I guess there were garbage strikes. So it was like garbage everywhere in the streets of England, you know, like, like, Mm -hmm. and so it's like a particular, that was a specific moment for them. And this is a different moment for us. So we, we need a different answer. But whenever I see something like that, whether it's like hip hop in the, in the, in the late eighties and nineties or, you know, like I heard that people went to like they they threw a rave and 200 people showed up and it was like in a sewer. All that kind of stuff reminds me of like punk energy. So maybe it's like it's more timeless than punk itself. Maybe it's just kind of a like a revolutionary spirit. But yeah, I would definitely say that the times are calling for it <laughs> right now. Oh, for sure. And, you know, we'll we'll see what uh, we'll see what. Uh, what comes down the pike? I'm sure something will. <laughs> yeah, there's like you said, there's a lot of political BS out there right now. That is full show. <laughs> <laughs> You'll lose friends on yep. Facebook if you post something about it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, 
but it, it's definitely calling for answers, man. And, and, you know, I think especially in places like that don't cost quite as much money to live in. Like, I think maybe Kentucky is like that. Yeah, it's, it's you got real. kids going into garages and, and practice spaces where they can afford spaces. Whereas places like here, like San Francisco and New York and, and like Los Angeles, it's getting harder and harder for people to afford a space to, to, to practice music. But they can't, even, uh, they can't even afford the time to devote to making music. So right. I think most of, of like the, the, the answers to our political moment that you're going to hear are going to be from places like, like California's Central Valley and, you know, <laughs> Kentucky, the Rust Belt. You know, people where places where people can actually still afford to the uh, the spare time and the space to get it together. What can fans expect at a show from the Mighty Me First and the Gimme Gimme's when they come to see you guys? Man, hijinks, <laughs> tomfoolery. Yeah, we try to set the place on fire every time. Figuratively speaking, of course, every time we uh, every time we mount the stage. I, I love the camaraderie that you guys have, and plus, you know, Fat Mike with no effects and what they do. They're they're jokes during the songs and stuff i think that's awesome i think that brings another special taste to the shows and everything yeah i do too you know it it, it kind of it you know an assault of of music you know depending on the band you know it, it's it can be great you mm -hmm. know what i mean like mm -hmm. that's that's how the ramones played they just like one two three four and yeah. and like hardly any time between songs, but I also like a break in comic relief. You know what I mean? Like it, it again, it goes into not taking it so seriously. Yeah. I heard fat Mike and, and El Jefe talking on stage when they, one of them looked at each other and yeah. said, you haven't been going to step class. Have you? He's like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> just good stuff man i love it from you guys do you guys like the digital era that we're in right now spike of recording albums getting out there quicker or no what's your take on this i mean like on the one hand i mean all right like if we had a universal basic income in this world like i'd say it's fine because all it's doing is sort of separating the wheat from the chaff it's separating musical hobbyists from people that actually have something worthwhile to add mm -hmm. at least in theory if that makes any sense. Sure. You know, like the only people that are out recording music are people that resonate enough that, that, that people want to hear enough that they sell enough of their music. And, and, you know, and in theory, that's a great way to kind of, to, to be a little bit more selective, like any band that wants to be successful or that wants to like sell a lot of any given record have to make that entire record something not just listenable, but like compelling, danceable, you know, whatever. Like the entire record has to be good because you can parse any record for just the songs that you like for 99 cents a song. So in theory, like that's great, but it's yet another industry that is being kind of disrupted by innovation and nothing is sort of, there, there's no alternative, but shit work. Mm -hmm. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's you know, I mean, you could go work, work at Walmart, you know, but uh, you know, like like not a lot of people that play music want to do that. True. But like I said, a lot of those people that played music, you know, like like if maybe if they were more serious about it, they they would be more successful about it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Generally, though, I I feel negatively about it, but how I feel seems to be kind of immaterial to how everything is progressing Spy. if that makes sense yeah. it just keeps going <laughs> it ain't waiting on me man <laughs> so what made you want to become a musician spike what was that spark for you that said man that, that's what i want to do my mom played music plays music like she played more like irish like folk music nice. and uh my dad was he's retired now but he was a music professor so I was surrounded by it, you know, like they played me the Beatles and the Stones and and, my, and the Yardbirds too when I was a kid. And, uh, and it made a, a big impression on me. I guess it just, I never really even questioned it. I mean, they did have me playing violin for nine years, but, but I put that down as soon as, as soon as I possibly could because I hated it. But <laughs> I was always involved, like there was always music around. So it just kind of like felt like. You know, is it wasn't it, even something. Yeah, it just was kind of a foregone conclusion. Is there any show or moment that stands out to you more than any that you can recall being part of me first at the Gimme Gimme? Or just any of the bands that you're associated with, you know, being like, wow, I can't believe I'm, I'm freaking doing this, man. This is crazy. Well, we had a show in Vienna last year 
where like 3000 people showed up and that, that was, that was really intimidating. And, uh, but it wound up being a lot of fun and really gratifying because the people dug it, you know, we had a good time. The people had a good time. And I want to say that's the most people that have showed up just to see us at any given time. And, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I it was know. a lot of fun. They don't know yeah, what... it was really intimidating, but ultimately a lot. Of them. They don't know what they're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. I guess I just love music too much, man. I, I guess I, I show more respect to these bands and what you guys do. I, I don't know. I'm just a love. I just love her music. So look over me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do too, man. <laughs> what about the too. What about fans overseas versus here for me first? Do they it seem like it's more even, or do you have more fans over there? Let's talk about that. Uh, in though. Europe. We we're doing pretty well in Europe, like especially up in like you know, like we do well in the UK, Holland, Germany. We do, uh, you know, we have great shows. We haven't been out in the states for a number a number of years, so it's tough to say. Like we're going back out, and it seems like some of the shows are are selling pretty well. But uh, no, like we Europe, like I said, that show in Vienna was was it felt like kind of a turning point, you know, like that was a lot of people and, uh, you know, Japan, we have really a, a good time too. It's tough to say. I, I guess we're more popular in Europe than anywhere else. I'm sure you guys get this a lot and I'm sure you get this with your other bands as well, but what's it mean to you, man, when you receive an email from a fan or prior to the shows or after the show with Spike, they come and they tell you guys that your music has pulled them through a tough time or it's uh, giving inspiration to overcome obstacles, or it's just made them to relax of the everyday bullshit that we go through. What's that mean to you guys? I love to hear that. That was something, like a lot of the stuff that I've listened to, that I used to listen to in my teens, that it, it might not have stood the test of time, but at the time, you know, I felt kind of persecuted. I grew up in Pittsburgh, and it was like a Rust Belt city, and a lot of people there were going through a hard time. And so the people that were going through a hard time gave other people a hard time, as in like people like me, like people with funny haircuts and shit. And right. so, or just, just people that, that, that were just kind of natural outcasts, you know what I mean? And, and, and the music that I listened to from that time, you know, like it helped me go out and face the world. So like, I know what it means. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice to hear. Guys, being weird and different makes you beautiful. Don't ever let nobody tell you differently. That's for damn sure. Someday, someday it does. You don't, you don't feel, man, like when you're a kid, though, all you want to be is normal. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> True. which is, you know, I don't know. If there was anything that, that, that I would hope that, that like people listening to the music would come away with is that like to, yeah, man, being yourself and be weird, you know? Because yeah. that, that's definitely like my target audience is is weirdos and not the weirdos that like because of what they wear you know or how they style like the ones that are like born weirdos man you know right. those are my people sloop john b by the beach boys country rose by john denver jolene dolly parton and all my loving by the beatles my favorites by you guys like i said earlier thank you guys right for on. what you do man how can folks stay in touch with you guys buy this new album that's gonna come out april the 7th tour dates stuff like that yeah how can you do that yeah, yeah, we're we're doing uh, we're touring the like East Coast, Rust Belt, Great Lakes, going up into Canada. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Actually, the tour starts in Pittsburgh, in my hometown. I don't know. I think the closest to you guys we're going to be is um, Cleveland. I think, but we're out there. We got Facebook, Instagram. Those, those are great ways to 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 find out what we're doing. Other than that, Fat Records they 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 stay abreast of our of our activities and and uh, developments. So, yeah. Before I let you go, good sir, will you care to do a promo for my show? Certainly. This is Spike Slauson from Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. If you have not listened to Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, I suggest you go right now and listen to these guys because they are badass. Thanks, Spike. Appreciate it, my brother. Thank you. Have a great night.